right. So on our last podcast segment, it was me talking to you without a guest. And I told you we were going to be doing that more and more often. We're still going to have a badass guest every single week. But I wanted to continue about what we were talking about yesterday on the last podcast about starting out in real estate, buying rentals, the do's, the don'ts. So last podcast, we talked about buying a multifamily first, a small multifamily, a two to four unit and working up from there. I didn't elaborate because I wanted you to know how that could be possible. So after that, what I would have done different, I bought several single family homes at once. I would have bought, let's just say a two unit to a four unit, but let's just say it was a four unit first. And that's a lot to tackle for your first project. So a two might be better, but if you're up for it, you buy a four unit, you get that rented, you get it stabilized, you refi it out, whatever, you have good money on it, it's cash flowing, then you go and get eight units. All right, and then 16, and then 32, and then 64. That's how I would have done it differently instead of just buying a ton of single families first. Now I wanted to go over to another segment is wholesaling. I would have learned to wholesale earlier. I was a little odd duck. I bought a lot of property first and then I started wholesaling. So what wholesaling is, and I know most people have heard about it, it is the craze. People think it's a get rich scheme, it's a get rich quick thing, but it's not. It should be treated like a business unless you're just gonna make a few bucks on the side. It needs to be ran like a business. All right, so to wholesale, what that means is you're going to get a property under contract, all right? And then you're gonna find an in buyer that will pay more than you got that property under contract for. If you got it under contract for 100,000 and you found a buyer for 20,000, you can arrange to have a separate assignment agreement signed between you and that buyer saying, hey, I'm going to make $20,000 on this. This is going to be my assignment fee. It could be drawn out any way you like. Some people have the purchase price it was this, and this is your price, or some people just have this is your price. And then at closing, everybody sees the HUDs. There's all different ways to do this. But in a nutshell, to start your wholesaling journey, there's a formula. Everybody knows this formula, unless you're a newbie, but you've probably seen it on YouTube or you see influencers talk about it. It's 70% ARV minus repairs. ARV is after repair value. All right, this is typically like a flip formula. So there's all different formulas in this game, but I'm gonna teach you like a flip form. That's pretty standard. And if you stick to it, you should do okay. So if a house all fixed up, pretty up, and this is important, ARV is not just this house has the same square footage down the road and is similar and it could be, you gotta look at the upgrade, you gotta look at the whole picture. All right, but let's say there's a $200,000 ARV house. Or let's say 100,000 to make it simple. All right, so I don't have to get a calculator out. All right, $100,000 house, 70%, multiply that by 70%. All right, you've got a $30,000 discount now, that's $70,000. Minus repairs, let's say the repair cost on that, you're gonna get a contractor over there because you're new and you don't know how to calculate repairs yet, right? So you're gonna get a few different bids. Let's say they're $20,000 just for the sake of it. All right, you're gonna multiply $100,000 house by 70% to get $70,000. There's 20,000 in repairs, so you're at $50,000 now. All right, so that means if you flipped it yourself, you would buy it for 50,000. You have closing costs and stuff too, remember that, but let's just keep this simple. You would buy it for $50,000. You would put twenty thousand dollars in. I'm gonna stop you here because um, your repair estimate should always be twenty to thirty percent over what you think it's gonna be. But anyway, we're gonna keep this simple. All right, you bought it for fifty. You put twenty in. Seventy thousand dollars. Perfect ass world. You sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. You made thirty thousand. That's not completely accurate either because you're gonna have realtor fees and other stuff. So you always need to think about that, but I'm teaching you the basics right now. But we were talking about wholesaling. So $50,000 is where your formula ends you up at. If you wanna wholesale that property, say you wanna make 
$10,000 spread. You need to get it under contract for $40,000. That means your end buyer see, does the same formula you did. You know, 70% minus repairs, they end up at 50. You got it at 40. You can do an assignment. You can ask for an assignment fee of $10,000 because it meets their formula. Now there's other strategies that aren't just 70% minus repairs, but that is a very good way to start. And if you find deals like that and you blast them out to, you know, just as long as you have permission, you blast them out, you know, however you have permission to blast them out, you build a buyer's list and you assign deals that way, you can make some really good money and not a lot of sweat equity. All right. There's also ways to list these things online. People call them novations. We're not going to get into the details of any of that right now, but I really wanted to let you know about wholesaling. If you were new to it, if you're intermediate and you have the basics and you're still kind of just making maybe a deal here, a deal there. And you're like, how do I scale to that next level of wholesaling? You need a team. You need human capital. Human capital is the lifeblood of any business. And what does that mean? You're going to need a dispo manager, right? You're going to need acquisitions people. You're going to need to figure out what to pay the acquisitions and the dispo. And you're going to need a dispo team. You're going to need a CRM. You're going to need marketing, which I should have started off first. All right. If you're going to wholesale, you need marketing unless you're driving for dollars all day. I'm knocking it, but it's not the best use of your time if you're wanting to scale a wholesale business. So what kind of marketing should you get? Because if you don't market, how are you going to get deals? Right? You're going to wait for word of mouth. You're going to wait till you drive by something. You need a market. There's paper lead. There's paper click. There's mail. There's cold calling. You name it. You can do it. There's you can buy lists. And you can hire a cold calling company to scrub those lists, get you warm leads. And if you can't afford acquisitions people, which you could just pay them commission, but say that you don't have a presence yet and you don't have any and you're calling them cool. You're calling warm leads instead of wasting your time dialing cold leads. Don't waste your time dialing cold leads. Hire a company, hire a cold caller to warm them up for you that know what they're doing if you're going to go that route. I personally like direct mail. I use REI print. They're not sponsoring me to say that. I like mail. It's super expensive starting out, but people keep postcards. They keep letters unless they get pissed and they shred them or throw them away. But months down the road, they'll be like, man, I got mail from that dude Travis several times. Now we want to sell. I'll get calls year round for mail I sent. And you know, we've done big deals with mail. So I personally love mail. There's companies like Lead Zolo that do PPC. What you do is, or PPL, whatever, you know, what you do is you, you connect your credit card or your payment source to them. And, you know, a YouTube ad pops up and says, hey, I want to sell my house. Travis wants to buy it, whatever. They fill out this form. It says their motivation, what they want. The leads are handed to you on a silver platter. Whatever your budget is, whatever it is you need to market. So I want you to get that in your head because anytime I meet people and they want to wholesale and they're like, well, we did a hit deal here. We did a deal there. How do we do more? What's your marketing channel? How are you marketing? What's your marketing budget? How are you going about marketing? Most of them are like, well, we're not, you know, we did that deal and it was all right. You need to pick a marketing strategy and then need to to build a team, you also need to get online. You need to document these things. Talk about what you're doing one to two times a day. Just do it on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Put yourself out there. Document your journey. You know what's going to happen? You're going to attract your tribe, right? So you're like, all right, I just spent, you can make a post. I just spent this on marketing. I'm going all in on myself. You know, this is a post that I'm talking, right? I'm going all in on myself. I'm dialing leads. You know, um, if anybody ever wanted to join me and dial leads, I'm giving it hell. Maybe we can figure out how to make money together. You're going to have people that are interested in following your journey. You're going to attract your tribe. So don't be shy. Talk about what you're doing. If you've got, got any questions on you know, scaling rental portfolio, wholesaling, anything like that, I told you we are going to be doing these segments. I'm dropping 
some game to y'all every single day because I said, you know what? One podcast a week with a badass person is not enough. I'm going to drop knowledge, y'all. I'm going to tell you what I know, what I don't know, and I want to be here to help you. So if you like this, follow my freaking podcast, follow Property Profits. Please tell a friend, give me a review. Let's get this thing up in the rankings. Let's help as many people as possible. I appreciate the hell out of y'all. Until tomorrow, let's roll.